Well, I got up this morning and I was really inspired to um, share what I shared. So I put the audio teaching on from tradition to the power of God. And God just really worked that in my heart. And I woke up with all these thoughts in my head and I just went into my office and prayed. And then I was just really inspired to just record. I didn't know what. So uh, that come to heart. And um, so God really is for us and he's really with us. And that was just a lot of instruction in that because, you know, the scriptures show us these things. And when we walk with God and put them to practice, then we really benefit from it. And God wants us benefited. He really has blessed us. He's blessed all of us. And, you know, it, and the gospel, the gospel, which is the good news and the grace of God are same words really you know like it's good news it's the grace of god god does the work it's his unmerited to find favor for us that he really wants to do for us and he's provided everything for us in christ and he wants us to really manifest every spiritual blessing <clears throat> he wants us he wants us to evidence that in our life so you know he's positioned us already at the right hand side of god in christ jesus but it's where we position ourselves in our heart and mind. And that's just so important. And I really love reading the Psalms. You know, I like reading them, meditating upon them. I like seeing David's heart, his heart towards God, the situations he went through. And he had challenges. And we all have challenges at times, not that we focus our minds on the challenges. So we've got to remember that even if things come up, they're under our feet. And, you know, Satan is a defeated foe. And it's not that we want to give glory to him, but we live life and we're in this world, uh, but we're not of this world. We're passing through and God has equipped us to come through any challenges, any situations, any storms. And it's again where we position our mind and what we say with our mouth. You know, your tongue is the rudder of your life and it can set and cause the things of God or the things of this world. So, you know, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And I was reading through the Psalms and I come across this one scripture and it just really blessed me, really blew me away. And it's in Psalms 2, verse 7, and it says, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And the first part of that, you know, he's saying, I will declare the decree. In other words, what God has said about him that's what he was going to declare. And that's what we need to declare from our mouth, what God has said about us. If you go to Ephesians 1.3, it says God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. God has spoken. This word is eulogia. And it means good words. God has spoken good words over and into our life. It's already done. So now we declare that decree of what God has said about us, that we are righteous, we are justified, we are sanctified, we're redeemed. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are seated at the right-hand side in the heavenly places. Okay, we have direct access to God. You know, we're free from condemnation. You know, we are healed. We are healthy. We are provided for. We're having a great journey through life because our minds is set on the things above, not on the things of this earth. So regardless of things that niggle us or try to distract us, these things that are going on is a spiritual warfare, again, which Satan has lost. And we've got to remember this. So it's just trying, it's an illusion to try and distract you away from your rest in God. Because really it's God that does the work. And when we're in faith, then God is working. When we're resting, trusting him, relying upon him, like it says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, will, and emotions. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, your own reasoning, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Here show you the shortcuts, the landmines, here show you navigate you around those things. Here give you the answers, the solutions. Here give you the direction that you to, you're to take. Here give you the words also to speak. And we got many promises that we can claim and declare from the scriptures. But God has also given you words to declare. 
you know, I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am prospering, I am a blessed to be a blessing, I am above and not beneath. And so these words we need to speak, like God took the prophet in the sequel, I can't remember which chapter it is now, but in the sequel, God says, you know, tell me what you see. And there was all these dry, dry bones. And then God told him what to say to those bones. So when he declared what God told him to say, God put sinew, tissue and blood on those bones, made them come alive. He put breath into them. And so when we are listening to God, when God tells us to say something, to do something, to call someone, to minister to someone, when we do what God says, when we're led by that spirit, then we're going to see great open doors. We're going to see signs, miracles, and wonders following us because we believe, because we're being led by God, because we're putting into practice everything that God made available through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so God does the work. like He does exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think of him so if you're in a situation a dilemma an awkward problem or whatever you know you just give that to god you say what you want to happen in that situation you declare you use your authority your words are your authority and it's been given the okay by god say what you want i've given you the authority i've given you the power I am working in you both to will and to do of my good pleasure. So when we are faced with different situations, and I know lots of people have been faced with them, I speak to many people, then this is why I'm talking this way as God is inspiring me, is that we don't let those things get into our emotions. We don't let it affect our faith in God and what he can do. We don't say, why me? we got an enemy. And he's a defeated one. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, mights, and dominions, right? we That's what we wrestle against. But again, these are under our feet. We need to recognize where that is coming from. But we know that when we're with God, that we have the victory. We are more than super conquerors. That's why God put that in the scriptures. You know, you're more than a conqueror. If you're not being defeated or challenged, how are you going to conquer anything, right? <laughs> We are seated at the right-hand side of God, but things do come up, but you are more than a conqueror. If you're in over your, or getting in over your head in a situation, you can't see a way out. God says that he will cause you to triumph in Christ Jesus. So like a triumph is more than a victory. It's a great victory. No, really triumph. And so when I think of like records like Second Chronicles with Jehoshaphat, when all those armies come against and, you know, they realized that the battle was the Lord's. It wasn't their battle. So when we put the things in God's hand, when we take God literally at his word and his words, then he can go to work because like someone said, he's a faith God. You know, nothing pleases God other than our faith in him, our trust in him, our confidence in him, that what he says he's going to do, he's going to do. So God really wants you to be at rest. He wants you to be at peace. He doesn't want you to try and figure anything out. But what he does want you to do is what he puts in your heart to do. Because he's continually working in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And in the meantime, when you don't know what to do, you carry on speaking in tongues. You carry on praying for those laborers. You cast all your burdens to God. And he has sustained you when you're going through those situations. And you know you know you got the victory. You know you can't maybe not see it in the physical, but in the spiritual you see it because God says that you're more than a conqueror. He's got the answers. He's got the solution. So you keep that image in mind of yourself delivered, of yourself given the testimony of your deliverance, that you're praising God. We give him all the glory because we can't do nothing in and of ourselves. But it's as we you know, submit to him and recognize that you know, God has given this great life that we can have every day, even if things are not right or they're not the way we want them. We can have a great day and a peaceful day. You can only live in a 24-hour period. So, you know, feelings we can keep in check. And we just bring it back to that our God is with us. We're at his right-hand side. 
there is answers, there is solutions, there is a direction, there is a way to go. And sometimes when we don't know what to do, we just stay doing the, the right things, you know, that God is putting in our heart. Like today I got up and I just woke up with all this inspirational thoughts and a, and a really a burning desire to share, you know, and I'm thinking, well, we got fellowship tonight and God just show, just do this. So I just done, I was obedient to do that. And I, I've already had lots of messages from people that were really blessed by it. And, you know, and it's God that gets the glory. You know, he's got his message that he wanted me to deliver. And so all I'm concerned about is doing what God shows me to do, to be obedient to my father, a loving obedience. You know, I really want to please him like Jesus please the father. And I want to do that. I want to, you know, give him glory and I want to bring people God's answers and solutions. And so I'm desiring that. So he's going to give me that. He's going to give me that work to do because I'm asking for it. You know, Father, give me your work to do. Give me your before ordained works. And I was sharing with Peter yesterday, like he called me and he was testing out his video. And then I just got inspired to share with him about praying for those laborers. You know, when we pray for a need, like a financial need or a physical need or a situation that's going on, we really go to God with it, don't we? We really pray. And this word pray in uh, Matthew in chapter nine is diomai. And it means to pray with desire, you know, pr really pray like it's a need. And so it's a need. We need laborers. No, the fields are still white unto harvest and the laborers are few. And we're not moved by the force of this world, but a lot of people that don't know the truth are moved by the force of this world. A lot of people are in bondage. We've got the spirit of the living God in us. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's that liberty. And so, you know, we're born again, not to live unto ourselves, but to live unto God. The just shall live by faith, it says in the scriptures. We walk by faith and not by sight. So what do you see? Now, I see lots of people with needs. I see that we need laborers. The work is big. The harvest is plenty. And God is the one that's going to bring those laborers to us. As we stay with God, as we practice the things that we're encouraged to do, not trying to do it from our own effort or strength, then God just opens up those doors for us to really move powerfully. I'm not doing anything by my own strength here, guys. I'm just doing what God puts in my heart. And I do stay connected because I think it's very important. I stay connected to God. And then as God inspires me, you know, I stay connected to Sangate, who's encouraging me and a great encourager he is. And I, I call him on a Monday or a Tuesday, and then I maybe call him on a Friday. It all depends what's going on. <clears throat> and if I'm inspired to do that, I, I'm not doing it because, oh, I, I better stay connected to Sangha or I better stay connected to this or that. I'm doing it because it's a free will choice and decision because I know it's very beneficial and I'm doing it as God leads. So when we do it that way, it's helping me in my walk. It helps me stay focused. It helps me see things where I'm missing when, when we're talking amongst each other, like I'm talking how we talk like this. And then it's like here, just get inspired to say something. I'm like, ah, that's the thing that I needed. Oh, this is really great understanding for me. And so I receive that with a humble and meek heart. And I know no one's better than me and I'm not better than anyone else. But as we follow, you know, God's direction, because we're trusting in him, right? If we're trusting him, we're going to trust where he wants us to be and what he wants us to do. And when we got that focus, see, when the focus is there, then God can really go to work. Then God can really bring those labors to you. He can bring you your answers and solutions also. So, you know, there's many people that have gone through many things and we can all help one another, like Michael and Lisa, that's great. And, you know, we just allow God to work in these things and we're all free. You know, you are absolutely free to do what you want to do with God. And there's no, like, you have to do this, you have to do that. What we're sharing here or what I'm sharing is encouragement and an exhortation if you do these things that I'm sharing which are there in the scriptures also, you are going to benefit. You are going to, you know, be accelerated by God. And I see that now. Like before, I was just doing my own thing. I'm free in Christ. I can just go and do what I want. 
but it's not beneficial all the time. And so there is a, a wisdom in that. You know, some people use the grace of God to come to fellowship and, and just live a life of an unbeliever. And that's taking the grace of God in vain, you know, is making none effect that grace in their life. And God's saying, you know, you can have so much better, guys. You know, yeah, you're saved. You've got Holy Spirit, but you're not getting the best from me. And I can't do the work that I've called you to do because you're just free. But there is that wonderful freedom, that liberty that we have with God. And that liberty and that freedom is when we're being led by God, when we're being led by the Spirit of God. That's the real freedom, because that's where the power, his power is manifested through us to affect the world around us and the people in it. And so there's many people waiting for you. And if we're just free flitting around, you know, I'm not having a go at anyone here. I'm just pointing these things out. It's my job. You know, before God, that's my job. You know, Paul would confront people and say, look, you know, this is not a good way, but this is the best way. So, we, you know, there's good and there's best. Devil wants you to have good, but God wants you to have the best because you are God's best and he's spoken the best and he's provided the best. So we should expect nothing but the best. And, you know, we're, we're sons and daughters of the most high God. And he's with us and he loves us deeply. He loves us deeply. He cares about every detail of your life. But he's saying, guys, look, come to me. Just do what I'm encouraging you to do. If you really want to see my power manifest in your life, if you want to see that healing, that deliverance of your life, just come to me. Just give me your desires. Just do what I'm encouraging you to do because I know what's beneficial for you. I can see ahead of you. And I can see to the left of you and to the right of you. And I can make that way where you don't have to get into a dead end road. You know, but you can keep moving on that highway of holiness with me where no ravenous beast can come upon, like it says in Isaiah. You know, so God is really with us. He wants us to stay with him. To stay with God is to rest in him and to continue to do the things that you know is making it beneficial for you and he wants you to be fruitful he wants you to have fruit and that your fruit remains and but it's down to each individual to do what god is putting in their heart we all have to make a decision somewhere along the line in our walk you know you know in your heart if you're really bumping with god if you're really doing what he's showing because you'll just know you've got that holy spirit in you and god can tell you you know, so when we just submit to him and do what he's so showing and trust him in that, that's the trusting. OK, you can't see everything that he can see, but he can see the things that you need. So when we just trust him, OK, God, I'm doing this because I trust you. I can't see where this is all going. But I trust you. And I've had to do this in my walk. Seriously, there was times I thought, yeah, I'm free. I can do what I want. But there is. We do have that freedom and that choice always, but we want to do what's beneficial. If you really want to see the word of God flourish in your life, you want to see people come from darkness to light. That's what we should all be about, by the way, because we all got that word and ministry of reconciliation. Then we just need to go to God and say, Father, just show me, just direct me and help me to be fed what I need to be fed so that I can flourish and grow. And help me get that sound doctrine. That's those right words, those good words that will help me to uh, see you go to work in my life, that you're actually doing the work. That it's not actually any of my knowledge or my understanding, but it's my submission to you. And so I'm learning to do this day by day. And, you know, the more I'm doing this, the more I realize there's not really a lot I'm doing apart from doing what God gives me every day to do. And like Sangate done a sharing called, you know, step forward with God. And I was sharing with Sangate, I said, yeah, and God put it in my heart that we can step back out of the way of God <laughs> and then step forward as he leads us by his spirit. So let's, let's let God do the work in your life. Go to him with all your heart, you know, give him your desire, pray for those laborers, you know, Pray for the things and the needs in your life because God has already met them. He wants you to manifest it. So you go to him. 
ask him for the direction, ask him for the solutions and the answers. And he's giving you that spirit of God, which is the power of God to overcome anything that will stop you from being who he's called you to be. It really is, is that power of God will, when we're tuned with God, when we're focused, when we're determined to do what God says, then we can overcome any problem, any situation. And uh, we can really manifest and speak his testimonies forward of what he's doing in our life. And God is working in each and every one of you. And he loves you. You're dear to his heart. He knows all your circumstances. He knows what troubles you. And he knows how to get rid of that trouble. And he's saying, you come to me. You cast those cares to me. And, you know, then he'll also lead you to people to minister and to encourage. You know, sometimes you might be in attack spiritually. You don't even know it. But when you're going to someone that's walking by the spirit of God, they can discern and they can get rid of things because they got the spirit of God in them. You know, we got this Holy Spirit, guys. And we're to exercise our spiritual senses to discern between good and evil and to know when spirits are operating and to cast them out because devils are under our feet. They are totally under our feet, like Satan is under your feet. So, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. This pandemic and trying to lock Israel down now, they've locked New York down. Listen, there's nothing new under the sun. But we got to stand our ground and stand on who we are in Christ. And we got to start declaring and saying what we want to happen. We ask God, you give me those words. You give me the vision of how you want this to be and how it should be. And... You know, I'm not coming under Satan's bondage because he's got no jurisdiction. So whatever these people in the world are doing, I'm not under that. If God can use Moses to deliver a whole nation, then God can use you to do the same in your area and your country. This is we got to expect big. God wants you to see big and expect big and talk big. And so we call it and then it becomes. So, yeah, let's decree the decree. What God has declared about you, you declare from your mouth. You change your situation. It's time to stop letting our situations dictate our emotions and you know where we are with God. You know, God doesn't want us to be up and down. He wants us to be stable. And when we're trusting in him, we'll have that peace and that joy in believing because we're believing, right? Believing is what? Confidence and trust in God's ability to do. Not by my might, nor by my power, but by the spirit of the living God. And it's grace. God goes to work when we do that. So God's just saying, look, believe me, come to me, trust me, and speak forth my words. I'll also give you words what to say. And believe me, I do this. God gives me words. And the things happen. And we're our own prophets in a way. Declare what you want, what you prophesying into your life. Because that's what it's like. we got the spirit of the living God, each one of us. So now we can start changing the things in our life with God, with him, as he's uh, inspiring, as he's energizing. So when our minds understand this, then we can start going to God and then he'll start giving and the words will come perfectly. So that's what I wanted to share.